Howdy friends, welcome to the Heat Transfer Showdown. We are going to be talking about some cool stuff here today. You guys should have audio now, um, I see in the screen. I was just hanging out in the, uh, in the background there. Today, we are going to be covering the differences between direct-to-film printing and screen-printed transfers. Uh, my name is Dave with Transfer Express. Join today uh, with me. I have Mike behind the scenes. He'll be in the chat section uh, this way, I think. But I am going to stay focused on a lot of the material. I do have the chat open up right here. I could see you guys chatting. Nikki from Maryland, hello. Um, and Joe from Ohio. Got a lot of folks from Ohio today, man. Making make me proud for the home state. But uh, in that chat section, if there is a question that I don't get to or it flies by too fast and I'm not able to see it, Mike will be able to give you the correct answer as well as well as provide links to things that we're talking about uh, and additional info as we go along. So Mike's really great behind the scenes. Uh, make sure to throw any questions his way uh, that I'm not able to answer and just keep an eye on the chat for answers to those questions. So without further ado, let's jump in because we have so much here to cover today uh, between these two, I'm gonna say fantastic transfer types, right? They are, uh, the tr screen printed transfers have been Transfer Express's number one selling product for over 30 years. It's exactly what Transfer Express started on, is screen printing on paper and being able to sell it to you. Uh, but with the new, uh, the new advancements in technology, direct-to-film is definitely gaining a lot of popularity as well. So I'll say these are the two most popular transfer types for their own reasons here at Transfer Express. So right here uh, on our slides, you see somebody inking up a screen, just kind of like what I mentioned in my own story when I learned how to screen print uh, well over a decade ago, inking up screens, cleaning them out, emulsion, pro proper exposures, uh, off contact, screen tension, screen density, all that stuff you could get with screen printed transfers without worrying about any of that learning curve, any of the mess, any of the cleanup, none of that. You get the same finished result on a t-shirt, a nice soft hand plastisol screen print. So that's just the type of ink that we're using. But we'll get into that. We're going to cover what is direct to film because it's brand new. Some people may not know um, what it was. And I know when I first heard it, like, what is direct to film? I've heard of direct to garment. So we'll cover what direct to film is. We're going to cover what screen printed transfers are. Um, and then we're going to cover uh, similarities between the two different transfer types and our differences. So what really sets them apart? We're going to cover what to use when, so how and what criteria that you're going to use and keep in mind when figuring out which transfer type you're going to use for your project. Uh, and then, of course, because this is the heat, heat transfer showdown, we're actually going to have a little showdown. And I'm going to put all of the knowledge of what we cover in the next hour or so to the test. And I'm going to look for your answers to provide the best stuff. And then we've got a really cool giveaway here at the end that's going to help you out and kind of encompass all the stuff that we've been talking about here today. Um, Todd, first question right off the bat, does DTF tend to expire like screen printed goof proof transfers? Which is a loaded question. When stored properly, um, I just, just last week got this question on YouTube which I will say, uh, if you're watching the replay here on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the Transfer Express page. And if you're not already subscribed, go over there and subscribe. Because just like education that we're doing here today, we release two videos every single week with on-demand education. And, and there are hours, and I mean hours of education and replays from past webinars over on YouTube. So if you're not already subscribed, get over there and subscribe. And all of that content too is built to help you out, whether we're covering uh, different niches or markets or even like social media marketing help or a business idea like the video we put out today, uh, just profit ideas to build in promotional merch that you could easily print with your heat press here in summer. So really cool stuff that's all built to help you succeed over there. Mike makes the joke over in the chat, literally ours. <laughs> Yes, I'm going to try to keep it somewhat brief today and fly through this. I'm um, not fly through it, but I want to give you guys the information. So, and if there's any questions, I do want to take the time to answer them. That's exactly what this format is for. Um, so, Christy, yes, I hope that answered the question that this will be recorded. So, essentially, that's our agenda. Let's dive right in and cover what are direct to film transfers, right? Um, Tracy mentions in there, uh, this is all new to me. I found it hard to understand without going down a rabbit hole. There are uh, a few different rabbit holes, but Tracy, I'm so glad that you are here because this is going to be uh, probably an easy primer. And if you stick to the end, we're going to have something great for you that's going to help you even more. It's free, right? 
free. So what are direct-to-film transfers? Direct-to-film transfers are also called DTF. So they are the same exact thing. If you hear somebody say DTF, it is not DTG. That's direct-to-garment. They're big printers that print directly on the fabric of the shirt. These are heat transfers. So they print a little bit quicker than direct-to-garment uh, and apply to a wide variety of fabrics instead of just the 100% cotton that direct-to-garment mainly is built for. I don't want to get too confusing and go down even more rabbit holes here for you, Tracy. So we'll stick to the script here. So DTF is a process print. It uses CMYK inks, very similar to a desktop printer at home or an offset printer. So that's cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, or the K also stands for black. So you have four different colors. When you mix them all together, it makes black or a very rich black. If you take them all away, it makes white, right? But you can see here in the first point, I have CMYK plus W. So it does print white inks, like you can see right there in the photo, right? I think it's on this side. So I'm inverted in my screen. So that's why I'm pointing all different directions. It's in one of those directions, right? So uh, with, with this, it does print in CMYK inks directly on the carrier film. So there is why it's called direct-to-film. Now it is backed with a white ink. So if you're familiar with a process like sublimation, very, very similar, except sublimation inks are printed directly on a paper, but you require a 100% polyester blank. So it really limits you to light colors only, white or light colored only, because uh, otherwise it doesn't have the white behind it. This direct to film has a white backer behind the image, right? So you're able to print on a variety of different fabrics cotton, polyester, cotton poly blends, even spandex and lycra. So uh, tri blends, 50-50 blends, anything like that, anything in between, you're able to print on. Light or dark fabrics, the colors are going to look the same because they have that white ink printed behind them as a backer. Now this is a water-based ink. I saw a question about like eco-solvent uh, inks coming through. Water-based is exactly that. These inks are water-based. Uh, we clean them up with soap and water when they spill. Um, but they are not a oil or petroleum-based ink like we will be covering with screen printed transfers. But that leads to, I don't want to even talk about durability because they are both very, very durable transfers, right? Directed film transfers are printed on a clear plastic, transparent plastic film, right? So that's why it's called direct to film, but they do come on a roll. So they're not available as just sheets, but they are printed essentially roll to roll, almost like large format or like banner printing is. So if you order a whole bunch of them, you'll get them in a tube uh, or like a more like a cone for shipping, but it's a tube uh, and it'll be one big roll that you have to cut everything out on. I will say, cutting these off of the roll into individual images, just like this order that we see here on the sheet, a whole bunch of images all, all nested all together. This stuff cuts like wrapping paper. So it's like really fun. You get it started and the scissors just slide on it. So uh, it's nice, effortless, and easy to cut. If you have one of those like uh, little slice cutters, cuts really easy on that, or scissors, uh, razor blades, exacto knives, whatever you want, whatever's your uh, weapon of choice, you're able to cut these out very quick and efficiently. So not really uh, too big of an issue there. But these direct-to-film transfers essentially hit the market. I believe they were released by us uh, January of last year. So we've been offering them a year. And there was that question about storing, right? I'm going to go back to that question about storing these transfers because uh, just last week, it got asked about the, the longevity and storage of these transfers. And I printed one of those transfers that was one of the first ones I ever ordered uh, that sat in the same tube. So I rolled it back up with the silica gel packs that they're shipped with. So the silica gel packs are just those, I think it's called dissect, dissecant or something. Um, but essentially, it sucks the moisture out of the air. So you want to make sure that the transfers stay dry. Now, over on our YouTube page, like I mentioned, we do have... Uh, a video where I took a 10 year old screen print transfer, pulled it out of an office filing cabinet drawer and applied it to the directions and it applied just fine. We threw it through the washer a couple times. I'm not gonna say that we put it through the 50 plus wash dry cycles that we test our transfers for before releasing them, uh, but it did withstand a couple washes and looked absolutely perfect. Same with that direct to film transfer that was a year ago. Now, if you keep them in a car or a garage or a basement that has humidity swings or uh, a shop with a garage door that opens and you get humidity in the summer and it dries out in the winter, yes, your transfers will not last as long as they should. However, when stored properly in a climate-controlled environment, no huge temperature swings uh, away from light, we see a lot of people store transfers in uh, reusable Ziploc bags 
or just the one that I printed that was 10 years old uh, was in a filing cabinet in a manila folder in a climate controlled office for 10 years. So the humidity stayed the same, the uh, temperature stayed the same, and it was in a locked, not locked, but it was in a closed cabinet away from sunlight and it lasted. So it's all in how you store these transfers is how long they last. And that goes for both direct to film and screen printed transfers. Um, so yes, let's let's keep rolling. I'll look here at the uh, um, the chat here. What about rain jackets and waterproof jackets with DTF? Or polyester, yes. With waterproof coatings, maybe not. Sometimes you need to take some rubbing alcohol and rub it off. Sometimes those are in the actual fibers and it makes it really hard to print on. But a lot of coaches jackets, those like 100% polyester, like windbreakers and stuff, absolutely no problem. I've seen direct to film print on it. And actually we did it at uh, the Long Beach uh, Impressions Expo this year. We showed some styles on that. Now nylon, those nylon jackets, you do wanna stay away from just because uh, the wash testing, they, they will stick. Direct to film transfers will stick to nylon. However, we have not fully approved it for nylon as it has not met the durability standards that we test all of our transfers for. So that testing has just not shown to be 100% complete. So we do not recommend for printing on nylon. It will stick, but if that nylon is laundered, it may start to wear prematurely. So just keep that in mind there. Cotton, polyester, cotton poly blends, tri blends, and spandex, lycra, elastane, whatever uh, brand name you want to call it on there. So um, let's let's continue. Let's go into what are screen printed transfers. So screen printing, if you're familiar with the apparel decorating screen print is one of the oldest methods to get a, a graphic on a t-shirt. And I say one of the oldest as like screen printing really only came to huge uh, he, kind of boosted the industry in about 1950, 1960. Screen printing has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, uh, but not for like a graphic tee. So uh, middle of the century, uh, that screen printing became the norm. And essentially, just like the photo that we see here, there is yellow ink sitting on this screen, which is acting as a stencil. So you're able to use that squeegee, which is that orange little bar uh, that pushes the ink through the screen. And that's exactly how we make our screen print transfers. Typically, you'll see this done uh, directly on the fabric of the shirt. So the ink pushing through over on our YouTube page. Again, I just did a whole video breaking down screen printing on the fabric. I actually pulled a squeegee for the first time in a couple of years uh, in our studio on camera to be able to screen print a shirt. And then we showed, uh, we actually went to one of our local screen printing shops here, got plastisol prints that were printed with an automatic big carousel printing press like you would if you just bought from Custom Ink or some other big print shop out there, right? Uh, or like some of you may be doing as well. And then we compared that to screen printed transfers and you will be shocked. It, and I mean, you shouldn't really be shocked all that much. It didn't, it didn't shock me, but the end result is identical without a ton of work. It's a lot more affordable to do. Uh, and those plastisol prints look and feel great. Plus the durability is there, that 50 plus wash dry cycles to meet the industry standard, uh, which is what we consider 50 wash cycles is about what a t-shirt gets before it really starts breaking down. The threads start falling out, you get holes in it. Um, it's just the nature of the cotton fabrics, unless you buy some really, really nice tees. But the average lifespan of a t-shirt, about 50 plus wash dry cycles, 50 wash dry cycles. So here, just like we see, yellow ink is the only color printing. This is what we call spot color. So how we went with process color, where we could, we could create almost any color using cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. Here with this, the, each ink is custom mixed for the color in your design. So we call it spot color. So with this, every single color requires a different screen. So say this artwork right here that we're screen printing on screen is yellow inks and white inks. So we need a screen for yellow and a screen for white inks when we're producing it. So that is why when you add more colors with screen print, say you're just doing a one color print, nice and cheap. As soon as you add yellow in this case, uh, it's going to increase the cost per print because then the setup is doubled, tripled for three inks, quadrupled for four inks. So that's gonna come into play a little bit later on here. Um, and so this is just something to keep in mind. Now, how direct to film is printed on a uh, transparent uh, plastic carrier, these screen printed transfers are printed on a just it kind of looks like a white piece of paper now it is a special type of paper that's hot release transfer paper uh, but that allows for the magic of the printing the screen print is printed directly on that carrier we add a little bit of adhesive to it it goes through a dryer to get gelled 
So both of these transfers arrive, they are dry to the touch. However, they are not fully cured. So like if you get your screen print on the paper, on the carrier, when you buy it, if you rub it, you could actually rub the ink right off that carrier because it is not fully cured. However, once you hit it with the proper application temperature, it is fully curing those inks, just like it's a traditional screen print. And then you could rub it as hard as you want with your finger on the fabric, and it's not going to be coming off. OK, so that's where you get that durability. And that's kind of how a screen printed transfer is made. But screen printed transfers are made with plastisol inks. So it is a petroleum based product or oil based uh, product, kind of similar to like an oil paint. But that leads to the stretch, the durability, the rebound of it. Uh, and so you have that nice, durable print that's going to hold up to washing. And it's also going to flex with the T-shirt. Right. So while it's durable, it still stays flexible, doesn't necessarily like breathe through the fabric. Uh, any large ink coverage areas are still going to, to block it, just like with direct to film However, uh, it's nice and, and, and pliable and movable. So uh, I do actually have two examples here. Um, if you could see me in my little, my little bubble, I'll try to hold these up to the camera. But essentially, we have a screen print here and then a direct to film print. Uh, as well right here. So same image, but just two. I'll go I'll go full screen here in just a little bit to, to show you the differences uh, between these two when we get a little bit farther in here. Uh, Chris asks, what's the temperature and time for screen printed transfers? Uh, and we're going to get to that in just a minute, but it's 365 degrees, four to six seconds, uh, medium to firm pressure, and then a hot peel. So uh, let's, let's just start covering into uh, some of these similarities. So both of them here, as we're talking about heat transfers, both require a heat press for proper application. So this is exactly kind of what I talked about. Good application is required for a durable, long lasting print. Like I talked about that 50 plus wash dry cycles, but I call it the tripod or the trifecta of heat printing. It's a, the recipe. You're not gonna go try to bake a cake and just be like, yeah, the recipe calls for two eggs, but I'm gonna throw in four and expect it to have that same great tasting result, right? So this is the recipe I always say, so not all heat transfers are created equal. Uh, so always just reference the instructions that come with your transfers for the best application. So it's a tripod, right? Time, temperature, and pressure. If you take one of those out, right? If you take pressure out of it, that tripod falls over. It needs all three legs to stand up to that uh, that that quality that you're expecting from the transfer, right? So when you have all three, you have consistent, predictable, repeatable results, which is exactly what you want. No surprises, no issues, right? You know exactly how it's supposed to apply. And when you are in a time crunch to fulfill that order for your customer who needs those t-shirts tomorrow, that dialing in that right recipe is going to get you those consistent, repeatable results, right? So that's exactly what you want. So. Both of these are heat applied, required uh, to be applied with a heat press. Some people out there say like, oh no, use an iron. You could use a household iron because pressure is variable. You might have a great timer. You might have accurate temperatures on your iron. Now I know some irons are just like cotton, linen, polyester, whatever it may be. Uh, so you're not getting that like dialed in exact temperature. A heat press is going to allow you to do that. So anybody who tells you like, oh, irons work fine, or that like cricket press, that's essentially just an iron, you don't have consistent repeatable pressure. So how are you getting awesome quality print shop results with just an iron, with that variable pressure? Now I know like if I put my whole body weight on it, I know it's a certain amount of weight, but maybe one time I'm using two arms, maybe one arm, or maybe there's a, uh, you know, it's a softer surface. You just don't know. That's why I always recommend uh, if, if you want those quality prints, those consistent repeatable results, a heat press is the only way to go when you're using heat transfers. Um, so they're one hit wonders. I love this graphic, the little record. They're both of these transfers screen printed, uh, the goof proof transfers that we're talking about, which are number one goof proof screen printed transfers, just the brand here at Transfer Express. Um, and Ultra Color Max, our direct to film transfer, are both one hit wonders. And what I mean by that is not like they had that hot single and then they go away forever. No, Goof Roof's been around for 30 years, right? It's not going anywhere, nor is screen printing. When like all of these new technologies come out, direct to film, direct to garment, everybody's like, it's the screen print killer. It very much is not. Screen printing has stayed so popular over time because there hasn't been a technology to replace it. Everybody tries. 
but screen printing is still great. And that's why the popularity of screen printing transfers is still through the roof. But what I mean by one hit wonder here, one step application, you put the transfer down, you close the press, you open the press, you peel the transfer hot immediately when the press opens, no waiting for it to cool down, no need to cover it with a Teflon sheet or a, a craft paper sheet or a uh, parchment paper or anything like that to seal it. These are both sealed in one step, right? So no need to do anything else. If you do have to, uh, if you see areas lifting up, go back and check your time, temperature, and pressure because we've had these thoroughly tested. There's an entire research and development department that even goes back and tests off the line uh, to ensure that there's quality spot checks every, every step down the road. So they are uh, apply, peel, and you can put them on right there. No need to put them through a dryer or heat them up with a heat gun or anything like that to cure the inks. Both of them are a one-step process uh, to, to cure those inks fully in printing, which is really cool because we'll get to some of the differences here coming up, but I'll, I'll spoil it and say that goof proof screen printed transfers apply in four to six seconds, four seconds, one second, two seconds, three seconds, and four seconds. Now you have a printed shirt. How cool is that, right? Super, super fast. Direct to film transfers apply a little bit longer dwell time, 12 to 15 seconds, but still absolutely fantastic. Uh, and that's, you know, 12 to 15 seconds, a little bit longer, but still great and quick and efficient when you don't have to cover and repress or wait for the carrier to cool down before you peel the carrier away. No, peel them hot. It's the best way to do it. Uh, it reduces all of those mistakes, but we'll get to that here in a minute. So, we talk about hot peel here, right? So with it, you do get the increased efficiency, right? So you don't have to wait for them to cool like I just mentioned, uh, and it's going to reduce application errors because sometimes when you're doing a cold peel transfer, your time temperature or pressure was off. And because you're waiting for them to cool down, you're like, well, I'll just print another shirt. Then when you go back and try to peel it cold, something, something didn't apply right. And now you possibly have two, three, four shirts, or if you did the entire run to go back and peel them cold, now you may have some application issues. So if something goes wrong, you know immediately on that first peel uh, that there is a there's a problem with that, right? So um, yeah, so it's going to help you reduce those errors. Now it is also just easy to use. the The press opens and it's just one step before you pull the shirt off the press, peel the carrier away into the recycling bin or the trash can wherever you're putting it, um, and then boom. Right, uh, stack it on the table, stack it on wherever you're putting your your big run of shirts to be able to to just get them out of the way. Right, so nice, quick, easy, and efficient. Now Michelle says here uh, we have learned that DTF is a longer press and doing second press with most cold peeling. Yes, with cold peel transfers, sometimes you do need that second step, and most cold peel transfers do recommend a second step. However, Ultra Color Max is a hot peel transfer; it should be peeled hot immediately when the press opens, and no need for that second press. Because really, really that second press, all you're doing is, is kind of reheating those inks. You could be over curing them. Uh, so that might lead to some durability or washing issues down the road with an over cured transfer. Uh, but you'll notice on that first press of Ultra Color Max that it's sitting into the fibers of the shirt. You could see the fibers of the shirt through. Um, you probably can't see on my, on my webcam here, but like you could see, yeah, it's not gonna focus on me not that close but you could see that you could actually see the texture of the fabric in the in the print itself so like that is that's telling you that it's adhered down there this was not pressed twice so um that's it uh trina you cannot recycle the ultra color max paper there are certain cities uh that use TerraCycle that will recycle the goof proof transfer paper which is uh, it's like it's not necessarily like a wax coating i don't know exactly what coating is on it uh, but it's like a wax paper. So uh, if, you, if your city uses TerraCycle to recycle, you can recycle those sheets. Check with your local jurisdiction because uh, sometimes sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. It just depends on the city, uh, township, county, state, wherever that you live in. Uh, but the, the PET carriers that are with the Ultra Color Max currently are not recyclable. So um, those will go away. Um, Let's see. Uh, Julie says, I have a Hotronics Auto Clam, only a couple years old. I hope it's calibrated okay. Um, I don't know what we're looking at on that one, but yes, those they're calibrated at Hotronics before they come, before they ship. Um, and in any issues where if you are worried about it, call Hotronics, uh, go uh, and submit a, a support ticket on their site or give them a call and they'll walk you through the entire process. So I've had to do that with a, an eight or nine year old press uh, as we were doing some heat press maintenance tips, right? 
So I was just going through doing all the maintenance and said, hey, how do you calibrate this thing? So sure enough, called up Hotronics. They walked me through it, no problem. Shout out to Trevor too, over at Hotronics. That guy is an absolute gem. But it's nice to have, That's and I, you bring that up, it's nice to have in the United States support. Trevor is in Pennsylvania, right? I've never actually met him, uh, even working for a Stahl's company. Uh, but all of the Hotronics presses are manufactured in Carmichael, PA. So just one state over in Pennsylvania, they're making these heat presses. And to my knowledge, the only brand of heat press that is actually made in the United States. Uh, and it's like laser cut everything from the Hotronics facility. I've been trying to get down there to see how it's made. I'm a nerd for all the printing stuff, but for manufacturing too, it's really cool to see. And all of the service is here in the United States as well. So you'll talk to a real person uh, who will be able to help you out. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's important to keep in mind. Marco says, what if your pressing machine doesn't have the option to switch between medium, hard, or firm? Uh, I am imagining that possibly you have the Cricut auto press or some kind of auto press. Um, so what we found when testing that, that was the biggest, I really wanted to love that press, but that was one of the biggest downfalls is that the pressure is not uh, able to be adjusted. So on most heat presses, you'll see a little knob on the top that adjusts the pressure, right? Or with uh, any of the fusion models, uh, the air fusions, you could dial it in and say how much pressure, and it's going to automatically add that pneumatic pressure to it. So, um, that with that, if you need to increase the pressure, what we found with like the Cricut auto press, if you have the HTV Ront press, um, that is the auto pressure, not necessarily ideal because it's more on like a medium to light side. Fine for like heat transfer vinyls, but something where you're trying to push ink into the fiber, real ink into the fibers of the shirt, you're going to need a medium to firm pressure, like say for screen printed transfers, right? Uh, so for that, what we did was actually build up the base. So we put mouse pads or print perfect pads layered on each other uh, so that it was stacked up about an inch high. And that's where we were able to start getting some decent application with it. But again, if you wanna see that entire process in more detail, over on our YouTube page, On Demand Education, just search Cricut over on our YouTube page and you'll see that one come up. Uh, Vince did a really, really good job of going through all of the features, unboxing to set up, to printing with it. So um, that, yeah, we were, I really wanted to love that press, but was just so disappointed uh, in the, the end results of it because um, yeah, it's, it's just a little bit of frustrating. So a little, a little bit. Um, so as we talk about our similarities, let's talk about how you could order them, right? Um, and so gang sheets are one of the best ways and most cost-effective ways to print screen printed transfers and is the exclusive way that screen printed transfers come which we'll see over here in this photo that we have right here so this graphic is able to fit up twice on a sheet so say you need 50 total shirts and you could fit two of them on a sheet now instead of ordering 50 quantity you're only ordering 25 right so it could help lower that uh that that kind of quantity that you need to buy up front and then say we charged our customer for that. It costs whatever it costs. I saw Joe ask the question um, or uh, somebody somebody asked um, what about pricing on these. Let's see. Oh, RJ asked about how much does the transfers cost on average. So we'll get to that in a minute, right? And we'll show you how you could actually uh, factor that out because there's a few variables that are going to play into that. But this is one of them. So say you this transfer sheet cost. Uh, $3 or something, right? Per piece for whatever quantity. I'm just pulling numbers just out, just for an example right here. So don't quote me on any of this. So uh, it's $3 for the sheet. Uh, and so a buck 50 per print, right? Not too bad. But then all of that other printing, all of those inside tags on the bottom of the page are free, right? If they're your own, uh, they're your own, you know, brand, they're your customers, you're, you're charging them for maybe a left chest print and a back print, and you could fit them both on the sheet. Now you could get that printing for free and printing for free, uh, essentially, and double your profits. If it's if you're charging them a buck fifty per print, and really you're only paying a buck fifty per shirt, right? Does that make sense? So uh, it, there are two different sizes for gang sheets here with Goof Proof: the standard, which is eleven and a quarter inch by fourteen inches, or Jumbo, which I use all the time. Because if you want to fit like two big, that's a standard sheet that we see right here on the screen. Uh, but if you wanted to fit maybe three of these on a sheet, you could probably do that with jumbo with some left chest prints or inside tag prints as well. So you are paying with screen printed transfers by the sheet. 
So you want to fill as much space on that as possible. Now, again, because as you add colors, the pricing is going to go up. So to truly get all of that extra printing for free, right, you want to keep it the same color. Like you can see here on this gang sheet, all of these inks are that same mint color. Uh, and then so they're printed all on the same shirt. But you'll see this happen and be really, really accessible to a ton of jobs with like a white ink. White ink is the most popular because it goes on so many different colorways. Uh, and so with white ink, you can put almost anybody's logo, even your own logos on there for free um, and be able to print your own shirts. Or like I mentioned, get that extra profit built into uh, the, the actual shirt itself. Sell, sell the customer on a sleeve print because then that's just gonna be a tiny little, little uh, location that you're just going to have to spend the time to put on. It's not going to be, uh, you know, any more money out of your pocket to buy the actual printing because you're paying the same price for the sheet. So really, really great way to pack profit into there. Now, gang sheets for DTF transfers, our direct to film, are up to 22 by 22 inches. So gigantic gang sheets. But with Ultra Color Max, you do pay per square inch. So if you just need single image, you could order single images of our direct to film Ultra Color Max transfers. With Goof Proof, you do have to buy it per sheet. Um, so Zana asked, can you do glitter ink on this type of print? Glitter and regular ink combo. You cannot do glitter and regular ink. However, you can do metallics. So if you want that shimmer and shine, you could combine metallic inks with a standard ink color. Glitters you could combine together, um, but you cannot combine them. They just don't apply at the same application temperature. Like I mentioned, all heat transfers are not created equal, uh, so they do apply at a slightly different temperatures. So, uh, but the metallic ones, if you want to add a little bit of gold shine or like a silver shine to it, you can add that with just regular, say, white inks on your project. Now, with Ultra Color Max, there are no specialty finishes, which we'll get into specialty finishes here when we start talking about differences a little bit. Uh, but the big difference here with the similarity uh, is that you can order single images in any quantity. So uh, just one thing to keep in mind there. Really, really great uh, to be able to take advantage of it for those low pieces, low counts. Uh, or if you just need left chests, you just want to pay per square inch for one left chest, just order that. You don't have to gang sheet it. We'll gang sheet it for you and ship it on a roll, like I mentioned just a little bit ago. So both of these transfer types are absolutely astounding quality, right? Leaps and bounds from what you think or have in your mind if you're just getting into heat transfers. It's not, they don't feel like stickers, right? They're not the transfers of old. These are great. They move with the fabric. They are flexible. They stretch and rebound. So like if you stretch it, I'll show you this one, right? If you stretch it, it's not all puckered. It goes back and it looks absolutely fantastic, right? not puckering, it has the stretch and rebound. Here's here's the goof proof, right? No puckering, goes back to goes back and rebounds exactly how it should. So that is a, uh, a great aspect of both of these transfers. Now you can have free floating text, any shapes or elements, and there's no like outline that it needs to live inside, like say a sticker, right? Uh, there is no weeding like with vinyl, uh, these come ready to apply. So all you have to do is cut them out of the sheet and apply heat and they're going to be printing, right? They do have a crisp, sharp edge. So it's not blurry. It's not faded. It's not smudged. Nothing like that. If it is smudged, something went wrong, give us a call. That should have never left the shop. <laughs> and we will absolutely take care of you if there's any issues. Mistakes do happen very rarely, but um, we are here to support you in the in the in the chance or case that it does. Um, there is no clear adhesive border. Uh, some other transfers on the market, you may see a clear border around all of the inks. Both direct to film and our screen printed transfers do not have a clear border at all. A, that nice, crisp, sharp edge of the ink uh, that's going to go, that, that goes right to the fabric of the shirt. So here you can see there is no, no outline on that whatsoever. It just goes from ink to shirt. And then the same with like this, this free floating text up here where it says Fairport. Now oh, it's all blurry. I wish I was able to get it. But this Fairport up here is free floating. That's the garment all around it. There is no outline. Uh, and we could print this on any color shirt here. Now, I do also have bright colors mentioned here because they both print, like I mentioned earlier, on white garments, on dark garments, black, navy, whatever it may be, because both of them, our screen printed transfers are opaque. Uh, by themselves. They don't need a white backer behind them. Uh, the inks are 
fully opaque. However, with our direct to film inks, they need that white backer. But because of that white backer, those colors look bright and vibrant on any color tee. You're not going to put on like a black cotton t-shirt and you're going to be like, oh, wow, that, that looks dull. Not going to happen, right? So um, a, a really great thing to have both of those, uh, those transfer types be able to print on almost any color shirt, right? I mentioned like white inks, you can print on reds and navies and black and heather gray, whatever it may be. And so you can have all of these different colorways with just one transfer. You buy that same sheet, you know, and then you're able to expand it to all of these different colorways. That makes it really, really great. So um, yes, one of those great similarities there. Similarities on the finish, they are both a matte print, right? Screen printed is a little bit more matte than the direct to film uh, just because of that paper carrier that it comes on. So it gives it a little bit more of a matte finish, but I'll try to shine both of these in the light here. This is our uh, screen printed transfer. So you can see it's there's no hard glare and I have like a ring light on me. So you can kind of see in my glasses, right? That there is a hard glare, right? And these are even the glare resistant glass on my lenses, but you can still get the glare. My videographers that that record all the YouTube videos with me love the reflections in my glasses. <laughs> but essentially here, you can see that there is no shimmer, shine. It doesn't look glossy or cheap in any way. And then the same here with this direct to film print. So with this one, maybe you see a little, you see a little, I don't, I'm trying to see in the little screen there. Let me actually, let me go, uh, let me go full screen for this one so we could do this, do this presentation. Uh, so you could see the differences here a little bit bigger. So this is our direct to film. No shine, no tackiness, right? Uh, and then we'll pull up our direct or our uh, goof proof screen printer transfers here. Let our camera exposure adjust. And you can see that this one just a little bit, a little bit more matte. So it's not necessarily catching the uh, catching the light as much as the other one did. But neither one of them is really catching the light. And again, that stretch and durability, that rebound pops right back to where it should be. And again, back to our ultra color, right? Stretch, rebound, goes right back to where it is, not puckering at all, right? So this is the direct-to-film print. Now, these are both printed on this Gildan. 100% uh, cotton. I think these are just the heavy cotton uh, tees. So they both look real good. And side by side, let's let's put them both side by side so you can kind of see them. I'll try to hold them both up at the same time. Fold them on over. And you can see the difference between them all together. So this one right here is our direct-to-film print and our screen print. So direct-to-film on this side, screen print here. So you can see in the same light. And this is a three color print. So we have our navy, we have this orange, and we have the mint color uh, all printed on there as well. So three colors. So even though this is a higher color count image, right, it does not, uh, it doesn't actually, uh, it just increases the price. But if you're printing in a large quantity, it's going to make sense for that. So keep that in mind when we start getting to these, uh, where we are going to get to the test, the quiz here coming up uh, in just a little bit. So one thing to get in there. So Tim, yes, uh, the color difference, right? So because one is a plastisol spot color printing, it is essentially like a Pantone match, right? So it's going to look the same every single time. Now, because of the CMYK build or RGB build or whatever uh, color space you're in, the colors may shift slightly with the direct -to film We are doing our absolute best to standardize the colors on that, but it is a process print. So it is not one single layer of ink. Like if you're rolling paint on your walls, you know, it is one solid color of ink. Instead of with the process print, it's actually four different inks coming together to make that color. So you will see, uh, we're trying to get them to match as close as possible but there will be minor differences between the different printing. Um, so Mike says, when pressing on DTF uh, on 100% polyester, you mentioned using a mouse pad as a pressing pad. Can a silicone pad be used as a pressing pad as well? So uh, I'm talking underneath. So underneath the garment. You don't want to put anything between the heating element and the transfer, which, Mike, I'm really glad that you brought that up because uh, – Whenever you put a Teflon sheet or anything over that transfer between the heating element and the transfer when you're pressing, that's going to block heat. So uh, I would not recommend a silicone pressing pad over any of these transfer types uh, in any way. But now if you have like a silicone like 
pressing pad to just raise a printing area to get uh, seams or collars, buttons, like if you're printing on this shirt here, add in a little left chest, you definitely want to raise this printing area so that I'm not melting any buttons, nor going over my pocket seam here as well, right? So uh, raising the print area with a mouse pad is really what we're talking about, uh, but I know that uh, there is that flexible like kind of application pad that you could lay over top. We don't want to use any cover sheets with these transfers. The, the carriers act as a cover sheet itself for that. So um, Mike, I hope that answers the question here for you um, as well. So we talked about our print finishes. Now let's get into our differences. And I kind of already touched on this one that Ultra Color Max is no minimums. You could order just one if you wanted to. Now that you could order just one image as small as a quarter inch by a quarter inch or one 22 by 22 inch sheet whatever you want, right? There is no limit to what you could get. Well, the limit is quarter inch by quarter inch or 22 by 22 inches. That's the only limit, but any quantity. It is at a fixed price. So you pay the same per, per square inch, whether you're ordering 200 of them or whether you're ordering one of them, right? Which is going to come into, come into play when we start running through a few of these different uh, pricing scenarios at, near the end of our, uh, our, our presentation here today. So with Gootproof, six quantity minimum i don't know how we do that okay i've worked in commercial screen printing shops and i was flabbergasted the first time i walked into the shop and they're like yeah the minimum six quantity and i'm still just as absolutely astonished that that minimum quantity is so low most print shops that i've worked at over the past decade huge commercial print shops that are servicing the largest clients in the world will not take a minimum under 24. Right. And a lot of decorators, just like you, if you guys want to let me know what your minimums are to your customers, let us know over in the chat section. Uh, but a lot of people will not take minimums under 24. The one commercial shop I worked for was 48. So they would not print any job unless it was over 48 quantity because the setup of screen printing, you need to burn all those screens. You need to mix the inks together. You need to set it up on press. There's a lot of setup to just print six sheets. I don't know how we do it, but I got to say, I love it, right? It's fantastic. It brings the quality of screen printing more accessible, right? So you don't need to be ordering these huge quantities. You could give your customers that screen printed quality as low as six pieces, right? So I don't know how we do it. I'm, I'm not going to stay out of that conversation as long as we could still do it because I absolutely love being able to get screen printing at that low of quantity. Um, so yes, you just want to be sure. So uh, yeah, if you haven't already, let me know what your own minimum quantity is over in the side. Because now with Goof Proof, you got six, or you could even be able to produce shirts at just one quantity. That's really, really fantastic. And a great point here of our Ultra Color Max and direct to film transfers. Uh, Nick's, Nick asks, can you use direct -to film transfers on hats using the Hotronics 360 IQ? You absolutely can. Head on over to the TikTok. I have a TikTok video of me printing it uh, with that. And uh, I've actually done goof proof on foam front trucker hats as well. Um, and even like the, the five panel, six panel, uh, you, I don't like crossing the seams. Man, I had one right behind me here earlier this morning and I took it over to get photographed, but essentially it's direct to film over the seam. And while you could see the seam through the print, it's absolutely adhered to the shirt or adhered to the hat. It's not gonna be coming off and you're able to get that low quality, low quantity decoration in high quality in any color that you need. So really, really cool features right there. Um, James asks, how well does the PVC patches work on hats? I don't have one on a hat, but I actually have a PVC patch right here uh, from one of our Pro Day events, which will be coming back for Fort Worth uh, in uh, for the Impressions Expo that I believe is September 13th. So get on over to uh, the Impressions Expo, get registered for that uh, Pro Day. We're actually going larger than we ever have before um, and we'll probably be giving you a PVC patch just like this to try yourself. But these are really cool. Look at that dimension on that. Like, it's cool. And then even, like, the black is raised up as well. Super, super cool. They hold up great on hats. They are absolutely fantastic. Uh, Laura asked for Ultra Color Max, how well do gradients print? They print fantastic. Uh, we just did them. Uh, the video that just released today on our YouTube, you could see gradients. We print them on koozies, like can coolers, uh, but you could see a full gradient. It is like a letter Q or G or something for a landscaping company. And it goes from like light green to dark green to light green again. Uh, and it looks absolutely fantastic. So go over to YouTube and check that one out. Mike even saying in the chat there too, gradients print fantastic. They sure do. Uh, so 
Another difference here, so we cover the minimum quantity, let's cover turn time. So Ultra Color Max, if you order it by midnight today, so say you're ordering by midnight Eastern time, we'll say, I just want to clarify, but if you order it by midnight Eastern time today, it's going to ship tomorrow. If you order it by midnight on Friday, it ships Monday. We don't work on the weekends. Um, sometimes we work on the weekends during busy season like it is right now, um, but because UPS and FedEx are not picking up, they're not able to ship until Monday. So they will ship Monday. So business days, order before midnight, it ships the next business day. So uh, there are a few caveats to that when you start talking about incredible volume. So anything under $600, uh, as your total order. So if you're just ordering single images, a whole bunch of different single images, uh, and you know maybe 20 of this image, uh, 60 of this image, and you get over $600, it's going to add one additional day. If you get over $1,200 as the threshold, it's going to be two additional days onto your production time. Uh, so just three days then for a huge order like that. But for 99% of the orders leaving the shop, they were ordered before midnight the previous day. So when you need something fast, that last minute order comes in and your, your customer's like, like, I need this by Saturday. You could get it done. You will have to upgrade shipping probably unless you're in the one day turn time. I don't know. A lot of people here are in Ohio and it's going to get to you in one day. So we can make that happen and print those shirts for your customers that quick. Now, as we talk about quick and, you know, speed, uh, goof proof also prints the next business day. Now it does have to be ordered before production cutoff. So instead of midnight, you have to order it before 11 a.m. So if you placed an order right now, we're in the Eastern time here in Ohio. It's it's you know just past two o'clock. Uh, so we're well past the 11 a.m. production cutoff time. So it's going to count as if you place that order tomorrow, right? So it's not going to be shipping till Monday. Now, if you needed that job for say Saturday, right? You can order Ultra Color Max right now and it's going to ship tomorrow. So keep that in mind when you're in those binds for uh, when you need that turnaround time. I'm going to turn my video off just here for a second so that you could see uh, what I'm covering up here. So that is with uh, next business day with the goof proof is with our easy prints, which if you're unfamiliar with what easy prints artwork is, it's from the easy view online designer at transferexpress.com. If we have a little bit of time at the end of this, um, if we have a little bit of time at the end of this presentation, I'll jump into easy view and show you some of the great tools there, but essentially, 10,000 plus pieces of customizable layouts, templates, and clip art that you could use completely royalty free uh, and really does not depend on your artistic background. You could print and you could create artwork for t-shirts that people will actually want to wear that look just like this one we see on screen. This Palm Beach volleyball tournament is one of the layouts in there. You want to swap the, the volleyball for a softball or a basketball and name it something else, you absolutely can. All of these elements are completely editable in there. Say you want to pull tournament off and just have it say Palm Beach vacation or whatever it needs to be, you absolutely can. They are super editable. I, I want to show you that here in just a little bit. Um, but yes, uh, we'll, we'll get to that if we have time. Now, if you are uploading your own vector or non-vector artwork, uh, it's going to be two business days for production time on that. Now, I saw somebody say in there, uh, Irella says, I'm in Oklahoma, and so it's going to take a little bit longer for get to my destination. Yes. Now, I will say, any transfer ordered from Transfer Express will get to anywhere in the continental contiguous United States, the lower 48, within two days. We use what we call speedy air delivery. So even if your order, you only pay ground shipping, right? $15 flat rate ground shipping. So here in Ohio, Pennsylvania, it could get to you in a day, um, or maybe even like Chicago, uh, Minneapolis, uh, a little bit farther into the Midwest, Kansas City, it's going to get to you in two days. But say you are on the West Coast, it's going to get to you in two days. We will upgrade your shipping for free so it gets to you within two days. So Express is in the name. Obviously, our turn times are fairly express here, but we want to make sure shipping's there too. Because what's the point of printing something in a day if it's going to take five to seven days to ship to you, right? So we want to upgrade that. So even if you're in Oklahoma, maximum it's going to be a two-day transit time. So possibly if it ships uh, Friday or you're, you know, then it's going to be arriving probably Monday. Um, but it could, could arrive uh, sooner than that here within whatever your shipping days are. You could actually go to Turnaround and Shipping, see all of our zones, uh, and we ship via UPS. So you'll be able to see uh, what that range is for standard ground shipping to you, but maximum of two days anywhere in the United States. Uh, so that is, is really cool. So um, Andrew uh, asked, can you confirm the website for easy prints decorating designs? Yes, it's transferexpress.com. 
Go to transferexpress.com, click online designer right there, a green button right at the top of the page, or order transfers. It's going to get you to the designer as well. Now, the designer is where you're going to place your order, um, even if you are uploading your own art, because it's going to give you an instant proof. If you have vector artwork and you want to rescale it or recolor it in any way, you could do that all in live time right there. Even if you have raster artwork, you could upload it right in there, rescale it, uh, and it's going to give you an auto proof. It's going to show you what your sheet's going to look like. You could hit add to cart with absolute confidence that you know exactly what you're getting. So I wish, I, I really hope, I'm going to try to wrap up so we get enough time so I could go in there and kind of show you. Because when it comes to pricing or turnaround times here, it takes the guesswork out of it as well. It's going to tell you what your pricing is and when your order is going to ship. So if you're if you're not sure, you know, you don't remember if it's 11 a.m. or 2 p.m. or midnight or whatever transfer type you're ordering, it's going to do those calculations for you right there in there. Uh, Kevin says best to upload a PDF. Yes, PDF, vector PDFs, uh, of course, are probably, I think, the number one preferred method of sending print files anywhere. But yes, those PDF files come, but we'll accept anything. P PNG, JPEG, TIFFs, uh, PSDs, EPS, SVGs, whatever kind of file type you have, we'll take it uh, most likely. If not, uh, we'll recommend a, a file type to save it out as. So as I mentioned that, I think of one that comes to mind, Corel Draw file. If you're using Corel Draw and exporting as a CDR, we do ask that you just export it as PDF and it'll import all the same right into our system. There's just some weird color handling things that go on with CDR files. Uh, and when we're dealing with print files, we definitely don't want color to be messing up and shifting around. So um, we definitely want to uh, make sure it stays the same color that you intended. Now here, when we talk about price breaks, uh, I talked about price breaks a little bit with the screen printed transfers, uh, with uh, you know adding more colors is gonna add a little bit more, but as you add more quantity, it's going to reduce the cost. Because of that setup, that's involved. Now there are no setup fees. There are no setup fees. You don't get any nickel and dimes here or there. It's not like, here's the price that you're gonna pay. And oh yeah, by the way, you have to pay $45 uh, for us to burn your screens. No, nothing like that. The only fees that we charge are artwork fees if you are submitting a low resolution file for say, Ultra Color Max, because it needs to be print ready. So if it's under 300 DPI um, or has some weird fuzzy edges or something with it, our artists will clean it up for you for 26 bucks, or you could clean it up yourself and avoid those art charges. But with Goof Proof, there are zero art charges. All of the art charges are included. Our artists will do anything to your file. You could send us, say you just make a napkin sketch, right? I take, I take this here and I go, I want a stick figure with this text over top. So you upload that napkin sketch into the designer, leave a note and say, hey, I want this to make this look good. And our designers will do that for you, included in the price of the transfer. Uh, so if you want a proof of that and you want to see it, then it's a $26 fee for the proofing process, two revisions and everything. But if you're if you're just, hey, I just need to get this done and out uh, and I trust you guys to do a great job, it is completely free, included in your transfer. Say you upload, uh, you know, an old design, you had a designer do a file for you and it says 2022 and you need it to say 2023. That's something where you could say, hey, edit this and say 2023. Or you could do it in the easy view online designer too. But if you don't, you don't want to do it, that's fine. We have artists to be able to do that for you, included in the price of the transfer with all screen printed transfers. Now, if you wanted that change with a ready to print process like the direct to film ultra color max, there is an artwork fee to make that change. So that is one huge benefit uh, and a difference here as we talk about pricing with these transfers. Now, ultra color max, like I mentioned, six cents per square inch, whether you order one or you're ordering a thousand, just depends on the size of your artwork, right? So six cents per square inch. If you're ordering a one by one graphic, costs six cents. A 10 by 10 graphic, $6. Simple, easy to factor, easy to calculate pricing, just the size of your graphic. So if you're doing left chest, it's gonna be really, really affordable to print all of those at a, even a larger quantity, right? But say you're doing a full front shirt, like that 11 and a quarter inch by 14 inches, that's the size of like a screen printed gang sheet, could get kind of expensive. Uh, very, very quickly when you're looking nine, ten dollars a print uh, of what that would be when you're screen printing it for three dollars. So we're going to get into some of those pricing comparisons coming up here very, very soon. But this is our pricing guide. So if you stick around at the end, I have a special offer to get you this pricing guide. Um, or I guess it's over here. I'll get you this pricing guide for absolutely free. You'll get a printed version. This is available on transferexpress.com. If you go to transferexpress.com slash pricing, um, there's a pricing calculator based on whatever ink type, whatever inks are in your artwork, whatever size your artwork is, will tell you how much it's going to be. But this is a great handy chart to have 
to just look at and go, okay, I'm using vector artwork. I have a two color print and I need 24 quantity. And it's going to tell you exactly what the cost is per sheet. Really handy guy to just keep around and get that uh, instant ballpark pricing. Now, you could also do it online uh, at any time too, but it's great to have this one, I really do. Now with uh, screen printing too, you get those price breaks, right? Six, 12, 18, 24, 36, 48, on and on and on and on, all the way up to I think 251. And then even when you break 251, there's like 480 or 520, there's, there's even more price breaks as they start to go up. Uh, so the more you order, the lower the cost per piece uh, that you get. So like here, uh, and I'm sure the probably the, the numbers here on this screen are very, very small for you, but at say six quantity, it's $9 a sheet versus 216 quantity, it's a dollar a sheet, right? So huge pricing discounts with bulk runs. So that's, I mean, it's very, very similar to how all screen printing is priced. So you do get the, the maximum profitability in a little bit larger quantities. And Ultra Color Max, fits that lower end need there too. And of course, when we start adding more colors to the artwork, starts increasing in price. So that same scenario that I said for our Easy Prints artwork, at six quantity, instead of $9 for one color, it is looks like it's $18 for a two color, right? But that $18 at two color at 200 quantity is just over $2. So again, the more you order, the cheaper it is, the more colors in your art with screen printing, the more expensive it's going to be. This uh, that I was holding up earlier, again, a three color print. So we have the navy, the, the orange or peach, apricot, whatever you want to call it, and then the mint as well. So three color print, right? So say this three color print we ordered, this is an easy print design, and we ordered, we needed a hundred of them, it's four dollars per sheet. And our jumbo sheet, we could probably fit two of those on it, so then we don't even need to buy a hundred, we could order 50. Uh, and so 50 jumbo sheets, at, that is what? nine dollars i think off my quick my quick look so there you go so nine dollars or if we were ordering a hundred four dollars yeah just over that so it's going to break out to a very similar price whether regardless of what we're ordering quantity break or not quantity break now the easy view online designer is going to tell you that uh, when you switch between the two different types right there all live real time that's why it's not just a designer it is a great tool for ordering your transfers and arranging your sheets because maybe you have some different pdfs that you're uploading you could arrange them and size them all on the same sheet without having to ask or wait for anybody to change anything with that uh, so really really easy and i want to get you the sheet so stick around here in just a couple minutes we'll get to we'll get it to you um so of course Differences here are application. I mentioned earlier, not all heat transfers are created equal, and I kind of even touched on the GoofProof application as well. Um, so here with Ultra Color Max, 290 degrees for 12 to 15 seconds, right? That is our time and temperature. It is a medium to firm pressure or a medium pressure. You don't necessarily need the firm, firm pressure, um, but it applies at a medium pressure. So that is pretty quick, pretty efficient. And one thing I do want to point out is 290 degrees is under the heat sensitivity threshold for the vast majority of fabrics. So those polyesters, if it has rayon in it, uh, you have that tri-blend with maybe some like kind of like viscose or spandex in there, you're going to get under that scorchability threshold at 290 degrees. So that is absolutely fantastic. Now, depending on like 100% polyester, some 100% polyesters could take like 400 degrees, right? Those sub, if you're sublimating or you dealt with anybody sublimating, they're sublimating those and they're printing those on a heat press at 400 plus degrees, right? So some polyesters could take that. I found, uh, in, uh, especially as people try to produce things cheaper and cheaper, you, you kind of get what you pay for with polyester. If you're going the cheapest route, it is going to be very, very cheap. Synthetic man-made polyester fibers that are going to be very heat sensitive. Uh, you look at it wrong and it starts to scorch, right? So I don't want that to happen. Uh, but the majority of polyester here, if you're seeing goof proof, 100% or 100% polyester is 325 degrees. For majority of polyester, that's safe. But depending on the brand you're buying from or where you're buying it from, uh, that it could be lower quality polyester. And you may see some scorching at that. So then get a lower temperature transfer. But as we talk about screen print transfers, uh, Goofproof is the main bread and butter, super versatile, but there's also ElastiPrints transfers, which are screen printed transfers specifically formulated for 100% polyester. Where Goofproof prints on cotton, cotton poly blends, and polyester, ElastiPrints is just polyester, but 290 degrees application temperature for that. And 
for really, really heat sensitive polyester, you could even go with like a one color down to like 275 degrees. So you could get below that, that scorch and that heat sensitivity threshold. But that's what I really love about Ultra Color Max. And not all direct to film out there is created equal as well. So you'll see a lot of direct to film apply at 320, 340 degrees. And they say like, yeah, go ahead and put it on spandex. You are going to burn spandex at 340 degrees. There's no way around that, okay? You might be able to put like some pads or something, but then you're blocking the heat. The transfer is not getting 340 degrees. So how is that going to apply properly? It's not. So look for a low, a true low temperature, hot peel DTF. That's going to be the best option for you. So even if they say it applies on everything, it may be scorching that fabric. So 290 degrees, I've personally printed on a ton of spandex in both testing and both for orders that I've done for, for my own friends and family uh, that it's applied perfectly fine. If you came to one of our pro days before, we were wearing a district uh, shirt as like all the presenters were wearing it. That was Ultra Color Max printed on it. And that had, I think, 15 or 20% spandex in that shirt. It's kind of like a very athletic fit, uh, but black especially a darker color that is prone to looking like it's scorched, no scorch marks at all. 290 degrees, absolutely no problem. And the stretch that that Ultra Color Max had on it was perfect. So yeah, no problem at all. Um, so uh, the, the comment here, when we press 100% polyester shirts, we always use a flexible application pad from stalls on top. Otherwise we see a pallet size impression on the polyester shirts. Are we doing anything wrong? So it depends on the transfer type that you're applying. Um, on that because you could be blocking heat. That flexible application pad will block 20 to 30 degrees of heat, which is why you're not seeing uh, any, any heat sensitivity on the platen. Now, one thing too, when you do see that platen mark, it's most likely because pressure is a little bit too high. Now I'm talking 100% polyester here, okay? Because on cotton shirts, uh, you're gonna see discoloration because of the moisture leaving the fabric where the heat press is touching it. Let, let it sit out for a couple minutes, five, 10 minutes, let the moisture from the air come back into it, uh, or just grab a little handheld steamer and steam it. And if the line goes away from the platen mark, it's just the difference in moisture. Cause with the steamer, you're just putting moisture back into the garment. So you don't need to do anything. If you just sit it down, we actually have a great video on our YouTube page that details, are my shirts ruined? And we detail the entire process. But if you lay those down, and let the let just the air get back into them, especially in like a humid climate. Now, if you're out in the desert, yeah, it's probably probably going to take a little bit longer than five minutes for the moisture to get back in that shirt. Um, but when you see that go back in, if you steam it, it's going to be a okay. The shirt is not damaged. We're talking about polyester shirts here that the fibers are actually melting. So you'll see that with synthetic fibers. Cotton fibers could take uh, 400 and plus heat. So you're not going to be doing damage to any of those. Sometimes you'll see like the dye or the sizing itself. So in the fibers, when they're manufacturing it, the sizing that they put in it, sometimes you will see that um, start to discolor or something, but uh, you'll see that even with like screen printing, sometimes with like people with carousel presses, if the squeegee is larger than the, and this is going to make super complicated stuff, but if the squeegee is larger than the palette area itself, you're still going to see that pressure that it puts on the shirt. Now, as soon as you wash that shirt or introduce it to more moisture, it's gone. That line's gone. The shirt's not damaged. It's just because they've matted the fibers down in that way that you could see that in your eye sees the clear defined edge. So that's the only thing. Even if you scorch your uh, you scorch your your shirts, we have a great video on our YouTube page on how to fix it too. Now, I don't recommend it for a huge order of shirts. The best not scorching is avoiding scorching in general. But um, but yes, if you're using that flexible application pad, say you're doing a left chest and isolating the print area, you could absolutely reduce the pressure. Um, so you're not, you're, you're compensating for that smaller print area than the whole print area itself. So, um, I hope that helped. That was a super, super long, complicated answer that covered everything <laughs> related to it, but I, I want to cover all the bases and give you the most knowledge as possible here. Um, yeah, Kevin Hansen dry fit from what I see is almost the same as cotton. Uh, some of them, yes, because some dry fit. Uh, like the Nike stuff is uh, predominantly, if, if it's not 100% polyester, uh, it's like 90% polyester. So it just depends on what it comes from. Um, we'll be showing the retro transfer dis distressed. Uh, Valentina, I don't think I have an example here in the presentation today, um, but we have a great promotion going on right now for a full distressed uh, goof proof sample pack. So the goof proof transfers that we're talking about here, the Plastisol transfers, uh, you could actually get the full sample pack of all of our distressing textures that you could add 
in the Easy View Online Designer. So uh, maybe Mike could throw the uh, the link for that distressing sample pack in there uh, to to pick one up, and then so you could see all of those different distressing samples uh, that we got there. Or even uh, Mike, if you want to throw in the blog post for, uh, or I think we even put a page together on like that distressing effect. We did a video on it showing off all of the different distressing effects that's over on the YouTube. Um, boom, Mike got it right there in the chat section. So yeah, check that out. So goof proof, like I mentioned, 365 degrees, that's gonna be safe for cotton and cotton poly blends, 50 50s, the vast majority of it. I just printed hoodies a couple, oh, what, a couple, a couple months ago now, I guess it's it's, it's June. Uh, it was back in April or March, um, but I printed a whole bunch of hoodies that were 50 50, 365 degrees, absolutely no problem. Took the heat fine, right? But they were district hoodies. They were a little bit higher quality than than like super budget Gildans or jerseys or something else like that. Um, Hanes for the loom. Uh, they were a little bit higher end. Uh, and so, like I mentioned, you kind of pay for what you get. Uh, and so you get a little bit higher quality polyester with that. No issue scorching on those at 365 degrees. Printed goof proof on them. Absolutely no problem. Uh, and I'm gearing up. I have hoodies on my desk right here. Uh, gearing up to film some more videos uh, of printing on hoodies. So uh, we're going to do that when we talk about the uh, 11 by 15 interchangeable platen. Super complicated stuff. <laughs> Not really at all. Uh, but we're going to be printing on those hoodies that are a 50-50. So, uh, and I plan on printing goof proof on them at 365 degrees and not having an issue. So uh, just something to keep in mind there. So, but with goof proof, there are those dual application temperatures for the 100% polyester. So 325 degrees for just an extended dwell time there. Now I did talk about Ultra Color Max applying to spandex, lycra and elastane, just like these leggings that we see here on screen, right? Right there. Perfect. Absolutely. Uh, no problem. We just did a video a couple weeks ago on putting Ultra Color Max on leggings. And man, I tell you, I stretch those so, as hard as I absolutely can. And it bounces right back to where it should. No tearing, no cracking, no ripping, no distorting in the print at all. Even with like fine lines and text, no distorting what, whatsoever and snaps right back. Now we've even wash tested that to 50 plus wash dry cycles uh, and the transfer looks absolutely great on that so just like this you see this is like a gang sheet example i wish we, I, I i cropped more of the t-shirt here uh but you can see this could fit all on one gang sheet so you can put it all on one gang sheet so you have the the prints going on this what looks like a blend t-shirt and then printing them on the leggings as well so you get one transfer type that does almost everything so both of them goof proof screen printed transfers and our uh, direct to film transfers apply to cotton polyester cotton poly blends ultra color max applies to all of the above plus that spandex lycra or elastane whatever whatever you end up uh whatever name brand you end up getting right so i did kind of tease it earlier when we talked about glitter or what you know what our uh, metallic inks or whatever we were talking about that the specialty inks and effects are only available with screen printed transfers. You could kind of simulate it if you want to get like a glitter or gold pattern, or maybe you're using a gradient or something to give a similar uh, look, but puff, glow in the dark, reflective um, are going to be the effects that you would get with a screen printed transfer. The same with metallics. I didn't include metallics here on this list, uh, but metallics, you just select. They're not a different transfer type of screen printing. Uh, they in fact are just goof proof. So that's why when, when I was talking about having those combined with say just white or black and you want gold inks that have that like sparkle to them, uh, you absolutely can do that uh, with the goof proof transfers. But puff is what we see here, uh, a nice raised dimensional print. Uh, it's been really, really popular in the past couple of years. Um, so you could get that puff, you could get glow in the dark, which is great for Halloween, uh, cosmic bowling, those night runs that are coming up, like the the neon fluorescent, uh, whatever they are, like the, the color runs that they run at night, the 5Ks and stuff like that. Uh, glow parties, foam parties, stuff like that. Uh, really cool. Uh, it's just looks like a regular screen print and it's like a slightly off white, but as soon as you turn the lights out after exposing it to light, boom, glows up. So uh, my daughter has one, I think they're like little ghosts or little skeletons all over um, on the one t-shirt she, she has. And like, it's cool when we go to bedtime and like, there's all these little skeletons and that's all you could see. So just like that, that's the glow in the dark ink that you could get here. But none of those effects are available with uh, with the direct to film transfers. We are working on some really cool stuff. So it's coming down the road. But uh, yes, yes, we are still uh, we're still we're still developing the technology there. 
Um, so Joe asked, can we print a rich black with either process? So you don't necessarily need a rich black with black screen printing inks. That is black. Like that is black, black ink. So uh, for, for anybody who doesn't understand what a rich black is, when we say CMYK, that's cyan, magenta, yellow, and let's just say black, right? So when we say black, it's just, you're not printing cyan, magenta, yellow. You're just printing 100% black. A rich black is incorporating a low value somewhere between like 13 to 33% of all of those other colors. So it's say, let's just say 20% cyan, 20% magenta, 20% yellow, and 100% black. And it gives it a nice, rich, deep, dark black. And absolutely, you could print rich black with direct-to-film. With screen printing, rich black is that black ink color that we're choosing. So it's not tied to any color build. It is tied to a specific color that you spec, either a Pantone match uh, or choosing from over the 70 plus standard ink colors that are available here at Transfer Express. So for no extra charge. In the three years that I've been ordering screen printed transfers, specifically goof proof, I have never had to color match. I do have a color selector swatch book, which is a really handy thing to have, right? So it has all of these standard ink colors that are all available here. So you saw some of the metallics as we're going through there. But what I've done is like when a customer is like, I need this specific, the one example was 2935, 2935 Pantone 2935, which is a nice, like super rich medium, just kind of like looks exactly like the cerulean blue on the crayon, right? One of my favorite colors. And I was able to pull out the color selector swatch book and right here, find this one, right? Royal or mid blue. It was one of these two that was exactly the same color. And I held it up to a Pantone book. Here's my Pantone book, right? So Pantone has a lot more colors in it, but I could find I could find 2935 somewhere in here. Oh man, that would have been crazy if I just like pulled the 2935. I don't know where it is, right? So you could pull these up and find a very, very close approximation approximation of the color that your customer is going to be okay with. Look at that. Like royal blue perfect on whatever color that is process blue whatever whatever it is so um i never actually had to request a panto match if you do need to request a panto match you absolutely can it's just an additional charge uh to mix that ink up per order right so um erwin if you want the color selector swatch book boom mike got it in the chat look at that uh that's why that's why i love mike mike is always there with the answers to help you guys out um so yes that is a one really great thing uh, to have so having that color selector swatch book gives you access to all of those colors including neons neons is one that i didn't even put on this list here but you could print neon ink colors six six total neon colors um that you could print from neon green to neon orange i mean that neon orange like burns your eyes it is bright uh but we're gonna have some neon stuff coming out soon so stay tuned i just filmed a video for it uh just a couple days ago so you'll see that coming out on our youtube page very very soon so as we start to wrap this up and get to the end of our presentation here, this is the what to use when guide. So as part of what I want to give you uh, here at the end of our presentation is going to be the pricing guide and this what to use when guide. Okay, so this is a nice, helpful chart that helps you just draw a finger line based on a few variables. So how many do you need? So what quantity do you need and how many colors are in your artwork? Now, there is a third question here is what fabric it's printing on as a secondary uh, question, but you see that in each broken down bubble here. Uh, so if you need two at one quantity, so you see apparel quantity across the top and color count is across the side there. It's cropped off just so it could fit on the, on the sheet here. But essentially you have something that's two colors and you need one quantity. So that's even below the six that's up in that left-hand corner. Um, boom. And so you'll be choosing ultra color max, right? Now, say you have three colors and you're printing 48 in this example that we have with my uh, my Virginia Beach T-shirt, right? So three colors, 48 quantity, you're going to want to use screen printed transfers, goof proof, exactly like what we've got right here, right? So I actually think this is the DTF one. That's the Ultra Color Max. This is the goof proof right here, right? So <laughs> you're like, I, I can't tell the difference, Dave. You're in a tiny little <laughs> bubble in the, in, the, in the bottom of the screen, but essentially, that's that's where you're gonna you're gonna use this chart to figure out what you need to print on or what what transfer type is going to be the best. Now I will say the one caveat I say here for this what to use one guide it is based almost solely on profitability and price. So this is going to get you the most profitable uh, transfer type for you. You will run into instances, and I've heard it from going to trade shows and talking to decorators just like you guys that like some some customers go I want a screen print quality. And I am okay paying for it at only six quantity 
or 12 quantity. I want screen print. That's the quality I want. And that's when you're going to, you're going to say, okay, yeah, cool. I'm going to use a goof proof screen printer transfer then for you. I'm not going to, I, I could get it cheaper. And this is the pricing difference of what we could get it cheaper, but your customer insists, no, I want screen printed quality. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, or say that instance that I said that you're just doing like little, like quarter inch by quarter inch, right? Because it's six cents a square inch. This is based off of an 11 by 11 inch print, which is a standard full front print, right? So that's where the pricing is based here. But say your customer says, I want 200 uh, one inch by one inch prints. You're going to use Ultra Color Max for that because that's still going to be cheaper uh, than any way that you do it, even if it's just one or two color, just because it's so small. Uh, you're only paying per square inch and it's going to be six cents per print uh, where the lowest you're going to get that with goof proof is probably going to be like at, at whatever quantity, even high quantity, you'll probably get down to like 10 cents or something. So you're never going to be able to beat uh, that pricing on a super small logo or maybe a left chest. So that may, that left chest logo may go up to like 36 or something. So all of the pricing, like I said, you could run through the pricing calculator, you could run through the pricing guide just to double check the profitability here on this chart to make the best decision for you. Um, Joe, have to head out now. Catch the rest on a replay. Have a great day. We'll see you. We'll see you. Um, and let's see. So Scott says, oh, we're talking about color now. Scott says, I suggest you go to, he's, he's talking to Kevin here in the chat. Um, I suggest you go to eBay and get a used color bridge coded book. $400 roughly full price. Yes. Got one for 90 in excellent condition. Pantone books are pricey. Wow. But it's the same thing though. So right, like these books, these Pantone books, they have to actually ink up spot colors and print thousands of colors, right? So it takes so much setup to create these books. The same, very, very similar setup. Now on a smaller scale, it's 102 screens that we need to screen print all of these. So this is actually like a Pellon fabric. And these are actual swatches of our ink colors printed as a transfer, then printed on this Pellon, right? So 102 physical screens go into this book, but we don't charge $400 for this book. No, it's 20 bucks. It's also included in the marketing kit. So if you pick up a marketing kit, um, that's, that's $49. This is $20 worth of it. So right here, this color selector swatch book, absolutely could not live without it. I use it almost every single time that I'm pulling out a, a t-shirt design. Cause I want to like, I want to see what the actual ink's going to look like against the shirt. Uh, and so I get to see that with that color selector swatch book. Um, let's see. Um, now, Kevin asked a great question. Would it be best to put a solid background on very small letters? I've had some small letters come off on DTF. So it depends. Uh, in the designer, again, I keep talking about the designer. I want to wrap this up so I could get in the designer and show you guys this stuff, right? So in the designer, uh, it's actually going to highlight areas that are too small and that are maybe going to run into durability issues just like that, right? So uh, it highlights them pink. So it'll say like, hey, this is small and you may have issues with durability on this. So then you're able to make it a little bit thicker and make it a little bit larger. So you don't necessarily have to put an outline on it. If you are doing like six point font, uh, you absolutely need to put some kind of backing behind that or put a shape behind it so that it's going to stay on because like that's way too small. I think the rule of thumb is like 18 point is the absolute smallest you should go on uh, on printing on fabric. And then like for legibility purposes, I think it's like 10 point or something when you're printing on paper uh, just for easy to read. So stuff like that. So uh, um, yes, Tim. That's a great suggestion. Tim suggests, Dave, you should consider doing two versions of the book, one you have and one with a black background. People always ask how it will look. Yes. Now the colors do, uh, like I mentioned, they look the same on light or darks. There are some, I'm looking at you, neon orange ink colors, right? Some that are slightly less opaque and look, like I said, like neon orange burns your eyes. It's so bright. When you print it on black, it's not. So we do note that in the color guide um, and even in the online designer uh, for any ink colors that are not as opaque on dark garments. But that's a great idea, Tim. I would love to see that too. Um, and I, uh, I think we've already talked about it, but I'm, I'm taking a note right now. And uh, yeah, we're going to see. Because I think we even have black Pellon laying around too. So um, I don't know. I'll get the, the forces that be on it. But this is the What to Use When Guide. Hang around for just a couple more minutes. We're going to get this to you here. So we are to the showdown part in our, uh, this is when I'm putting your guys' knowledge to the test here, okay? We even have a soundtrack. This is the showdown. <laughs> so using the collective What to Use When chart, right? that we just kind of went through and what everything that we've covered here today, 
Let's go through this what to use when. Number of colors in our artwork here is white. One color, right? Our quantity that we need for our customer is 20, and we're printing on 100% cotton shirts. The size of our graphic is 11 by 11 inches. Jose, I appreciate you. We, we've been having way too much fun. Uh, we've been <laughs> way too much fun with the theme here. <laughs> And uh, and so, yeah, I had to play the music, had to play the music. So with this one here, Tim says goof proof. I want to hear what you guys think here in the uh, in the in the chat section. Let me know what you think. Uh, Chris says Elastiprint coming from left field. Remember, Elastiprint is for 100 percent polyester. Um, Sandra says DTF, but it looks like the consensus here is goof proof. Um, and so let's see what our pricing is going to break down. Uh, no cheaters here. So, so here we go. You have until the slide changes to get your to get your uh, get your get your votes locked in here. Well, we're starting to see a mix of UC Max and Goof Proof, um, some DTF Goof Proof. Scott just says no. <laughs> not taking the job. Twenty quantity white one color. Not taking the job. Scott says no. A lot of Goof Proof coming in now. DTF. All right. We're switching slides and. Let's look at the pricing here. 20 sheets of Goof Proof at $3.99 is going to get $75 out the door right here. Ultra Color Max at 11 by 11 is 121 square inches. Times that six cents per square inch is $7.26 each. So all in all total, we're looking at $145 with direct to film. So we are we are almost doubling the cost of the transfers if we were using DTF because it's just that white one color at 11 by 11 inches. So we're gonna go with Goof Proof, $75 or $3.99 per sheet. So with that $3.99 too, maybe we're putting inside tag prints, some left chest prints for our own brand or another customer, we're able to get that in there. So, but that's okay. If you, and this is what this webinar is for, right? Is that we want you to be able to make these decisions and we're all learning here, okay? So if you got that one wrong, we have more opportunities coming up. And I'm, I'm going to even throw a, a trick at you here too. So, so stay alert. All right. We got our next scenario coming back up just because we're on the showdown again. We pull the music up again, right? We're having fun now, right? So this is our numbers of color. We have a full color design. So let's say it's a photograph here, right? We need 10 quantity. It's going on a 50, 50 cotton poly blend at nine inches. So let's see what you guys think this scenario is going to be with the what to use when i see ucm ultra color max ultra color max direct to film Ooh, we got it going in i think you guys see you guys are on it now nobody's saying goof proof it's all direct to film ultra color max and this is it you guys are awesome fantastic nobody is wrong nobody's wrong keep going let's keep it going i don't see a single wrong answer right here and Goof proof is just not going to be possible at that quality that quantity. You're not going to be getting that full color image. So here with the flowers and the buoy and the, the yellow text, everything in there, you get the fades and the gradients, everything in there, not able to do it at a low quantity. And this one, $4.86 each at 10 quantity. It's going to be 48 bucks for all of that printing. And you're going to charge way more than that to give it to your customer uh, at that low quantity. So you are going to be absolutely uh, crushing it. You're absolutely going to be crushing it. Claire saying goof proof just because I said not to say it. <laughs> Oh, we're having too much fun now, but this is exactly right, right? You guys got that perfect, right on, spot on. That's it. All right, we got we got another one here for you, all right? Um, I don't need to play the music again, do I? I don't know. I like the music. So we'll play it again. That's our showdown, right? This is the showdown. So our number of colors here is three, three colors in our design. We need 200 adult, 100 youth, and 20 infant. So, whoa, a ton of printing here, 320 total quantity, but it is three colors, right? So something that may be almost similar to this one, right? Three colors, but we're going to need 300 total quantity in varying sizes. It is going on 100% polyester uh, and cotton poly blends here. So you're going to have a little mix, little mix in here. And the sizing is going to vary too, 11 by 9 nine by seven and a four by 3.5 for infants or onesies, right? So lots of babies coming here, man. And you guys, goof proof, goof proof, goof proof, goof proof. Ooh, throw a, a, a few thrown the curveball here. UC Pro, 
I like that train of thinking. You guys, you guys are getting there, right? Getting there, absolutely looking good with that. Um, and and we're pulling it up, pulling it up. UCM, goof proof, goof proof, goof proof, goof proof. So here, let's look at the pricing, and we'll break it on down. Goof proof is going to be all three images on one sheet, right? So we're able to order all of those right there. 200 quantity is going to be our to our, our largest quantity because so for our adult our, our adult sizes. So we're going to need a, going. Whoa, we're going. I'm doing the showdown myself here. Uh, we are going to need to be able to order 200 total pieces because we have one of that big graphic on there. But three dollars and seventy cents at 200 quantity is going to put us at seven. $140, right? So looking at UC Max, if we do the 11 by 9 at 200 quantity, that's $1,000 right there. So we're able to get all sizes for the same price as just that 11 by 9 adult size. But we'll tally up the 378 bucks for the youths and then another 20 bucks for the infants. And all three are 1500 bucks. You're saving $800 by going with Goof Proof. Now, I didn't do the Ultra Color Pro pricing comparison for this. I wasn't expecting you guys to, to throw the curveball at me that early. Uh, but when we didn't run this pricing, the Goof Proof here is even cheaper than Ultra Color Pro. If we switch this to four colors, you betcha, Ultra Color Pro is going to be the pro on this all day. So just one thing to keep in mind there. Man, you guys are doing absolutely fantastic, okay? So here is our next scenario. It's one color. We just need four. It's printed on 100% cotton, and we're doing two locations, okay? Two locations, right? Now we did. Now, Tim... Elastoprints, you got you kind of got me on the last one. Some were 100% polyester and some were cotton poly blends. So that's where 100, Elastoprints is going to be for only that polyester, but we're able to span the two with that goof proof. So you got you got me on that one, Tim. You got me on that one. That's great thinking. But you, this is it. This is awesome. You guys are absolutely fantastic. I see a lot of people here on this saying UC Max, DTF, DTF. Remember, we just need four quantity. And what's the minimum for goof proof? Minimum for goof proof is albert saying hot split jk you guys are having fun that that yeah six quantity is goof proof that's the minimum for goof proof so four quantity that's going to put us at ultra color max that's right so six sheets of goof proof is going to be nine dollars so 60 bucks so we can do it we're just going to be ordering a whole bunch of extras and we're able to put that back print and the left chest print all on one sheet right but let's check the pricing with ultra color max that two by five uh on the front is by or the yes so here two by five um so timesing it by the 0 0.06 is 60 cents right so we got it all right there the back print is going to be 330 each at a, like a five by 11 print so all four shirts are three dollars and 90 cents each instead of nine dollars um and boom Fifteen dollars and sixty cents versus sixty cents, and these these folks here look like they're going to a Bruce Springsteen show or at a Bruce Springsteen show at what appears to be Madison Square Gardens. So, but you see that? Look, it just says the boss, no Bruce Springsteen or anything copyrighted on that. That's one great way to to, to get around uh, licensing. But you can see this that back print pr hopefully doesn't have any any copyrighted information on it. But the front looks fantastic. Left chest back print, even though you could combine them both on one sheet much cheaper to do at just this four quantity, right? So you're saving $42 right here. Um, so yes, right there. Uh, let's see, anything else here in the questions, right? Um, yeah, all that extra space, and maybe you just want to add something for your own shirts, or here's the caveat for this one. You have another customer who just needs like a 11 by two inch graphic for like a left chest for a landscaping company. And that's when you throw this on a goof proof sheet and you put it all together. But if this is the only project you're working on right now, uh, of course, it's just going to be Ultra Color Max with that savings of $42. All right, let's see. What else? I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself with my cheat sheets down here. Um, and I think this one is, is this one? This one might be our last one. So because it's our last one, let me do the music one more time as we get this scenario down, right? Four colors, 200 quantity needed. 100% cotton, and it's a 9 by 8 graphic, all right? Let's see it, guys. What do you think it is? You guys are too smart. What is going on? You guys are super, super smart here. I see some great answers coming in right off the bat. 
and this is maybe I maybe I prefaced it that the trick question was coming. I said this was the last one, but some of you guys absolutely awesome calling out pro CDTF uh, goof proof on there goof proof goof proof goof proof. Um, I did kind of I did I might have spoiled this one too by calling it out, man. You guys, I got it. You guys got it. It is. The trick question is going to be Ultra Color Pro right here, and let's just break down this pricing real quick. So, 100 jumbo sheets uh, at at seven dollars a piece is going to be seven hundred dollars. That's being able to fit both of these graphics on here, four color image for this cheer camp, right? So, I saw a question too, a little bit back, said like, how do you get a softer hand feel with Ultra Color, right? So, this is a perfect example. While this is a large full front image, right, nine by eight. That's a that's a sizable graphic, right? Um, that this is broken up with these little dots. There is show through images that are breaking up through the garment. So this is any print method, whether you're doing direct to film, screen prints, direct to screen printing, like if you're actually pulling squeegees yourself or you're doing uh, direct to garment printing, you're covering up the fibers of the shirt, right? So anytime you could allow a break to let it breathe, it's immediately going to feel lighter. And this is a great way um, to, to, to use this. Now, uh, Gloria says, I'd pay more for anything to not use Ultra Color Pro. Uh, but I guarantee if you felt this image right here, it's not going to feel uh, a thick digital print or anything like that. So with Goof Proof, 100 jumbo sheets, still at $7, so $700 total printing. We're able to get two on a sheet, so we could order 200 with just 100 sheets, right? So now with Ultra Color Max, that nine by eight uh, is going to be $4.32, so that's 72 square inches in there. Um, and then times that by 200 is gonna be 864. So Goof Proof and Ultra Color Max, very, very close, but because we're in the higher quantity, Goof Proof is just 160 some bucks cheaper, right? But this is where the hybrid transfer, we didn't really even talk about it too much here today, Ultra Color Pro is going to come in. 100 sheets at just $4, we're able to fit two images per sheet, 464 bucks, and we're saving 300 some dollars, just under 300 some dollars there by switching on over to Ultra Color Pro. So uh, a great way there. Rita, good size for a full front image for a standard adult. I always go with 11. If you're printing on women's tees, probably stick it around that nine to nine and a half inch range, or if it's a big circle or something like that. Uh, but for standard adult tees, 11 by 11 for me is going to sit it right here. So if you see, like the rest of the shirt here on the side wraps down. So wraps to the side. So if you want the print to be on the front of the shirt, don't go any larger than 10 and a half, 11 inches. If you're going to like extra small sizing or something like that. So 10 and a half, 11 inches looks like a great print right here. So like if I hold up this shirt in my little bubble, I'd say that this one is 11 inches wide. Just kind of looking through it, through the light, uh, sizing up to my own, my own body. Yeah. Oh, wow, Dave, are you going on vacation? That looks great, right? So, yes, absolutely. So you guys got that trick question. So smart. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, yes. So, yeah, uh, Kevin says, I just did Ultra Color Pro for 200 shirts front and back. was $400 cheaper than Goof Proof for multicolor shirts. So right there, Kevin, how did you figure that out? What, what was the giveaway? Were you using the designer? Did you use the pricing guide? How did you figure out that it was $400 cheaper? Let us know, Kevin, um, and, and let's go. So, uh, so Eclectic says, is there someone we could ask which is best to order? So kind of, you could ask the website anytime. So in the Easy View Online Designer, it's going to tell you what is going to be the cheapest. So now that we're here, um, we're already a little bit over time, but guys, I wanna, I'm wanna, i just gonna hop over to the Easy View Online Designer real quick. We'll do a recap. I'm gonna get you guys this special offer that's 100% completely free, and we'll wrap up and we'll get on get on out of here here today. So um, let's, let's head on over to transferexpress.com is right here. So you see we're at transferexpress.com. I mentioned the green button right up here, Online Designer or order transfers. Now, if you just want that instant quote up here at the top of the page, instant quote, this is available on uh, uh, anywhere. So it's on your phone too. If you just need to pull something up, so like screen print, let's say we're printing Plastisol inks, goof proof. Our, our sheet size, we'll just do a standard sheet. We're going to need to order 50 sheets right here. Number of colors are uh, one color and I'm going to be using vector. Let's just say I'm uploading my own vector uh, or actually designing in the easy view because that's what I'm about to do uh, to show you apples to apples. So we're just going to calculate and it's going to tell you right here. Now, number one, it's telling me what my order by is. So if I order by tomorrow at 11 a.m., this is shipping June, June 12th, Monday. 
So this is telling me in real time when I need to order this by, and it's telling me how much it costs, how much per sheet costs, and what quantity I'm getting. So if you could change any of this, let's just say, let's bump this to 100. You see, this all changes here in real time. But this is just the calculator. If you don't have art, you're just trying to figure something out. Uh, say if you want to go over and look at the same scenario. So let's say full color. We could say pull here. So let's go ultra color max. This is our DTF. So what did we say we needed? Like 100. Let's say this is an 11 by 7 inch graphic. Calculate. So 462 bucks, $4.62, right? So it's telling you everything right here. It also says order by 6 8 by 11 59 before midnight tonight. And it's going to ship tomorrow. So really cool. I can't, I just, I just realized I was looking at the other screen and I'm covering it up. So right, right here at the bottom, you can see here that it's telling us when we need to order and when it's going to ship the total square inches of what we're going to be producing and the price that we're going to pay. Right. <clears throat> cool. Fantastic. Let's hop on over to the easy view online designer. Now I, Oh, oh you kind of, well, it was right kind of next to me, but I'm going to turn my, uh, I'm going to turn my, my, uh, my, my, my little video off here so you can see all of the designers. So let's just say here, let's just go through. Here's this entire catalog of artwork, right, <clears throat> that we were just talking about. So because it's the, the heat transfer showdown, right, so we could just select this. I just double clicked on this, and I'm going to say showdown because that's what we got here. So I'm just showing a little bit of the customization here of what we have. So the showdown, this guy's ready for the showdown, but if I want to replace this with, say, a clip art of a rodeo or something, right, I'm just showing you how easy it is to just change all of this stuff here in the Transfer Express designer. This is the Easy View Online designer. <clears throat> I want to grab this little rodeo guy. That's cool. We're going to grab him. And just, just to show you one more feature here, I just want to add an outline that's going to knock this out so you could kind of see this guy a little bit better. But you could see this is not stuff that you could do with other designers this easy, right? Super, super easy. So we just have this black print. It is at uh, 11 by 8, so kind of very similar to what we were just doing. And now we have all of this extra space. You see this dotted line all right here. So let's just add, let's say we're going to add some, uh, just some inside shirt tags or something, right? So you could bring these in and customize them all the same. If you need to change this to, say, like medium or something, we could say medium, whoop, not two Ds, medium D. So just like that, you could change all of those. And then I'm just going to go up to object, duplicate, and you can see how easy it is to just populate this entire sheet out on and on and on, fill whatever space you need here, right? So down here at the bottom of the page, if you're following along here, this is where we'll select our print method. Bottom left, so we have print method, screen print, goof proof, or if you want to check the, the Ultra Color Max Pro, whatever it needs to be, we could click on Max right here. But let's just say screen print, goof proof, and I need 50 quantity of this, right? So here we are, 50 quantity. It's telling me all of the same stuff of what we were just looking at in that pricing calculator. We're at $119.50, $2.39 per image, and it's shipping 612, right? We could go next, review, add to cart, do whatever we need to do. But now say, let's just check. Let me uh, let me pull these off. So just so we have apples to apples comparison, if we're just comparing the pricing for this artwork, which man, with a jumbo sheet, let's see. So I went up here to artboard and here's jumbo. And I bet we could even fit two of these here on a jumbo sheet. And I'll just copy and paste to duplicate it out. Ooh, maybe we could turn it upside down. Yeah, we could totally fit two up on the sheet. So there we go. So you could see all of this stuff that you could run in real time. So instead of 50 now, uh, we just need 25. Isn't it going to be cheaper than 137? Sure enough, it drops down to 97. So one cool thing here too is say like I'm on the cusp here, 22 quantity, but a little warning comes up and actually tells me that I could save seven dollars 86 cents by increasing my quantity to 24. so check out this price right here right hundred dollars 459. we're not trying to rip you off we're trying to help your business out here in the designer save me money and look at that 93 dollars. now it just added more quantity and we're actually paying less so it's going to calculate those pricing breaks and tell you uh, so really really cool but let me get rid of this uh this other image here I'm getting on a tangent. And if you want to watch a full easy view demo, we have a master class up there and in bite-sized videos and a playlist. Uh, but let's just look at the pricing here. So we're back at, let's say, 50 quantity, right? So this one's going to be $2.75 per image, 137. Actually, let me change this back to a standard size sheet. What? Uh, landscape sheet, standard size sheet. So here we go. Back to 239, 119, right? So let's check what this is going to be if we go over to full color, ultra color max. So now we're at $5.97 per image at $297, 
What was that for goof proof? So 297 total price for 50 of them or 119. You can see that this, this, this calculator right here in the designer is giving you this information all in real time. Then if we just went to next here, we could add any notes to say like, hey, I don't, I don't like make this, make the horse guy a little bit clearer or add a thicker outline, which you could do in the designer or change any of this text uh, to a different font or whatever you want it to be, which you could all do uh, here in the designer. Just I don't want to sell the designer short. There's 200 some fonts in here uh, that you could easily change the font, right? But if you don't have the time or don't want to do anything or have a question, like, hey, am I ordering the right transfer type? Leave that note in there, right? And then we'll just go next. We're going to go here. You can add notes. Say we're printing on a cotton poly blend. It tells you it's compatible. So you don't have to memorize all the stuff here. The designer is going to tell you. Just make sure that you're going to be putting this stuff in here. 100% cotton. Even if you wanted to add blank apparel, you add it right there. We go next. Now we're reviewing all of our details. It shows us what our transfer sheet's going to look like with the dotted line. Of course, we just had the one on here. But if you had other pieces here, it's all set. And even if you wanted to say, like, look at this on, it's going to be printing on a Columbia blue shirt or a uh, yellow shirt, right? So let's go down to one of our yellows and just say it's printing on a yellow shirt just to look at what it's going to look like, right? You can see that. Kind of looks a little crazy, but kind of cool, right? It's the showdown. It's like regular DTF transfers, but and goof proof too, or whatever it needs to be. And then right here, we just click add to cart and it goes add to cart, right? So really, really cool stuff right there. The designer is going to tell you how to do it yourself um, and just a really, really great process to upload your own art. Now, uploading your own art is the exact same way that we did this, except instead of clicking add layout, you click upload. And right here, you see all of these file types that we accept in here. And of course, like I mentioned, Corel draw files, save them out as PDFs as, as you go. So um, yeah, that's going to be where it is. So just to recap here, screen printed transfers, best. Here, I'll come back on camera now that I'm not covering everything up in the, in the bottom corner. Screen print transfers, best for bulk runs, 12 to 24 pieces plus. Uh, but if you do want need a minimum of six, you got a minimum of six. Uh, spot color artwork is preferred. So you don't want any gradients, no... Uh, no fine detail or anything else like that, right? So uh, then you get efficient printing. You get just a four second press. I, uh, during one of our pro days at uh, the Impressions Expo in Atlantic City, I print, I was talking to people and printed 24 shirts in like 18 or 19 minutes or something, right? So like we were printing very, very quickly, even as I'm talking to people, it's just super efficient. You get those quantity breaks on the pricing like we saw in the designer that lower that per piece rate. Uh, one to two day shipping with an 11 a.m. production cutoff. Uh, you get specialty effects as well. So if you want the puff or the metallics or neons or something like that, but you could only order as gang sheets. Now, direct to film, small quantity, single images. There is absolutely no minimum quantity. You could order just one. It's great for photographs or higher color count images, heat sensitive fabrics, or even spandex, elastane, lycra. There is a fixed six cents per square inch pricing so there is no quantity break so when you get in those higher quantities sometimes gets a little bit pricier now of course ships next day if ordered before midnight and there's gang sheets or uh single images so jeremy asked a great question because we didn't really cover it what's the maximum number of colors that you could have on the screen printed transfers as many as you want i believe the maximum of what i've seen printed uh in the past three years was 13 colors uh for a commercial client and it looked absolutely fantastic but they were ordering thousands of them, right? And they were still a little pricey, but a 13 color screen print's gonna be pricey whichever way you're looking at it, right? So, uh, but you know, they wanted the the look and feel of screen print. They wanted a four second application. They wanted, they, 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 they ordered it before and they needed to reorder it again. So you can do as many as you want. For pricing, you'll notice on the price guide that it only goes up to four colors. We could do more than that, um, but really, that's going to be pushing it on like profitability unless your customer is OK fronting the cost on that. So uh, before we wrap things up here, guys, I do want you to try all of this for yourself. Don't just trust me. I'm here to help uh, guide your business or help your business with resources that will help you succeed in the long run. But I want you to try it yourself. So Mike's going to put a link in there for a free sample pack if you don't already have one. Uh, Jeremy, the cost for color matching is $25 per color per order. Um, but try these samples, okay? You're going to get samples of Goof Proof, Elastoprints, and Hot Splits. So even uh, the, the top three screen printed transfers that we offer, 
Um, you're going to get samples of digital transfers as well. So you'll get the Ultra Color Max direct to film, and you'll also get the Ultra Color Pro that we shouted out as the trick and that last question, the digital screen print transfer. So it's a digital print with a screen printed adhesive behind it, where it is the, uh, the added powder adhesive with the direct to film. So a little bit slightly different process, but you could compare them for yourself with little samples. Now you'll also get that what to use when guide printed out for your reference to use anytime whatsoever, right? And you'll also get the pricing guide, 100% free, zero obligation. You don't even need to put in a credit card. If you don't have a Transfer Express account, you'll need to create one, but it's completely free. You don't need a business ID or a tax license or anything like that. Uh, a business license or tax ID, I mix those up. But uh, there is a spot at the bottom. If you have one, put it in, that's great. Um, we could we could forward you the information to get tax exempt. Otherwise, no problem. Anybody could sign up here. Um, but yeah, follow that link that Mike just threw in the chat right there for the sample pack for the free uh, from this webinar. And you'll get all the stuff we talked about today free. And this is gonna ship uh, probably tomorrow. So you'll get it maybe Saturday, maybe Monday, depending on where you live, maybe Tuesday. That does not ship with the speedy air delivery. So it may take up to uh, five days to get to you, but it's gonna be sent on the way. We'll even send you a little uh, little confirmation that your order shipped, uh, but it's just uh, this sample pack coming your way. So be sure to go over there and grab that absolutely free. Um, and I just wanna help you guys out, that's it. So um, yeah, grab one of these sample packs. If you don't already have one, you get all of the screen printed transfer types to compare and apply yourself. You get even to, didn't even mention it, but you get the idea book, which is filled with some, the greatest hits of those 10,000 plus pieces of artwork. So you could use it as a catalog to browse through to get some inspiration for your own t-shirts from, uh, or get some inspiration or be able to pitch your customers when they say like, I just want like a palm tree and some curved text or something around it. You'd be like, yes, here's this layout. Look at this one. Is this what you want? Because a lot of people, I came into the industry from graphic design and I understand the, the struggle, right? Everybody's like, I don't really know what I want, but I'll know when I see it. This isn't Netflix, man. Come on. I'm going to spend a lot of time putting stuff together uh, that you're not going to pay me for. Or I'm going to have to say, hey, yeah, I'll put some comps together, but I'm going to charge you $50 an hour for my design time. And they're like, whoa, whoa, my budget's $100 for these shirts. Like, I just need a couple of them. Okay. Then this isn't, you're not just going to browse around and I'm not going to make you a custom design. Now you can. The idea book and Easy View Online Designer gives you that power. So, um, Awesome, yes, you get all of those samples right there. Um, yeah, select, when you get to that page, select the mini sample pack with catalog. That's the one that you want, has all of these different samples in there too, uh, that you could pull down, get them shipped to you and you get them there. So um, guys, thank you so much for hanging out today with me. Uh, I really appreciate you. Any extra questions right now, let us know over in the chat section. We'll get them answered to you. Um, if we don't answer them here, we'll even download the chat and we'll email and reach out if we didn't get to your question during the webinar here. Uh, make sure to grab one of those free sample packs. Again, completely free. No obligation, no nothing. Try these samples for yourself and feel the difference between each one. Uh, have those as examples that you could show your customers if they're like, well, what is it going to feel like on a shirt? You'd be like, here, this is going to be it for this price or for this price. This is what it, this is the ink technology that I'm using. This is the print method that we're using. Um, but yeah, we're all set. Mike just uh, threw the link right there in the chat again. But guys, we'll see you soon. We're always available. Info at transferexpress.com. Reach out at any time, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., 1-800-622-2280. Of course, like I mentioned a couple times here and a couple times again, if you ever want to reach out to me directly, just comment on any of the YouTube videos on the Transfer Express page and make sure you go over there and subscribe. Tons of learning always available for you. But uh, until next time, hold on, give me one more opportunity here. But until next time, happy pressing, guys. We got to play the showdown music one more time, right, before we log on off. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, yes, the, the replay will be available. We'll email it out to all you guys along with all the slides that we included right here today. Um, but I appreciate you guys for hanging out. We went a little bit over on time, but if it's helping you guys out, I am all for it. I'll clear my entire afternoon into the evening to help you guys out uh, if we need it. So thank you, thank you, thank you guys for hanging out. Um, and yeah, hope to see you on a webinar coming up soon or maybe in person at a trade show coming up where we could chat about your business, your goals, and what we could do to help you absolutely crush it this year. All right. But until next time, I'm Dave. Happy pressing.